morning everyone the target educator welcomes the students online lecture for pedodontics today we are going to discuss about uh, weekly test two there would be 200 mcqs and we would be discussing all those mcqs am i audible just reply on the live chat button please reply so we are going to uh, today you already appeared for the weekly test two of pedodontics we would be covering uh, the 200 mcqs the various references included in this test include from shoba tendon pinkham mcdonalds few are from philips and few are from shafers so the first uh, mcq uh, would be according to the intelligent quotient classification as of a score of 120 to 139 is given as the answer to this question is superior this is taken from mcdonalds you can uh, read this out 140 and above is very superior 120 and 230 is superior and accordingly similarly at the same time we also need to understand the classification for the mental retard mental retardation which includes 52 to 68 which is mild 36 to 61 is moderate the first category is educable okay there is few mcqs there are two to three mcqs in this chart which i am talking to you the first chart is about the iq the second chart is re related to the mental retardation and the third is the uh, formula given for iq the first chart you can see is includes the various category this is taken from mcdonalds you can clearly see the non pharmacological management of child children behavior uh, and then in this uh, second chart table which includes the which includes the classification of the mental retardation has mild moderate there are two category uh, there are two mcqs here the mild iq from five, uh, 52 to 68 is uh, is educable the mild category is educable and the second moderate category is trainable this this moderate category 36 to 51 is a very commonly asked mcq in various papers moving to the second question is which of the following is a commonly used for immobilization of head in a norm compliant patient this mcq has been taken from mcdonalds as well as it has been also been mentioned in shobha tendon you can see the classification here as the various physical restrain which are used for body are papoos board triangular sheet pedi wrap bean bag safety belt for extremities we can use posi strap velcro straps towel and tape and an assistant we can use head for an head here so we have asked for immobilization of the head so the answer here is a forearm body support the other immobilization techniques used for ex extremities uh, for the head are forearm body support head positioner plastic bowl and an extra assistant moving to the third mcq it's a very simple mcq you shouldn't be making any such any mistakes in any of these mcqs this is the rights classification uh, in which they asked for the categories number of categories in the cooperative nature cooperative behavior so there are three categories cooperative lacking cooperative ability and potentially cooperative this slide shows you the various classific uh, rights classification for ch children cooperative at the same time we have included the frankel's behavioral technique uh, classification for cooperative which includes definitely negative the key words we need to rem remember here are definitely negative is refusal so whenever mcq asking if the patient is refusing then it's frankel behavior rating scale negative and if he is reluctant uh, 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 if the if he is refusing then it's definitely negative and if he is just reluctant then it's negative also remember that the category starts from negative to positive it don't start from positive to negative it's from double minus to minus to plus to double plus similarly it's from definitely negative to definitely positive so these are simple things but you should not make any such mis any mistake in any of these questions
So moving to the third slide is which of the following root canal filling material is contraindicated for use in deciduous teeth? Okay, this is a very tricky question. Okay, and the answer to it is calcium hydroxide because calcium hydroxide is not routinely used in pulp therapy of primary teeth. Although white up X can be used for pulp therapy, it it contains calcium hydroxide, but it's not the major component. It's not main. Only calcium hydroxide is not used for uh, pulp therapy in primary teeth. The reference is given here is Shoba tendon. It has also been also been mentioned in Pinkham. So the answer to this is calcium hydroxide. The various other root canal filling material are Volkoff paste, KRI paste, Mystos paste, white up X. Endoflas. Endoflas is a component consisting of calcium hydroxide, iodoform, as well as zinc oxide eugenol. Cola coat is another MCQ that have been mentioned over here, which contains collagen, which is a very recent material. Presently, endoflas, white apex, and metapex are the most commonly used material in pediatric dentistry. Moving to the next question is learning disability is otherwise caused as. This is a different MCQ which in don't encounter normally. The answer to this is minimal brain dysfunction. Learning disability is not a uh, is not a disease as such. It just it's a disability. It's not like infantile psychosis of brain dysfunction or ADHD. It it's a disorder and it can cause in three to fifteen percent of the population. The definition includes. That, uh, that it is a term applied to the children who exhibit a disorder in one or more of the basic psychological process and it includes various conditions like minimal brain dysfunction, dyslexia and developmental aphasia. Moving to the next MCQ is who have given the term ECC and the answer you will have to remember there is no logic behind this. It's Davis. The answer goes as Davis. Okay, and the various other MCQs related to early childhood caries, you can just see on your screen right now. EC, the definition of the ECC, this has been taken from McDonald's. It's the presence of one or more decayed, non cavitated, or cavitated missing due to caries or filled to surface in a child of 71 months of age or younger. The definition for severe LD childhood caries is any sign of smooth surface caries in the children of age of 3 years of age. And it also includes for age of 5 as one or more cavitated missing teeth or filled smooth surface in a primary maxillary anterior or a decayed missing or filled score of greater than or equal to 4 at the age of 3, greater than or equal to 5 at the age of 4 and greater than or equal to 6 at the age of 5. This all constitutes severe early childhood caries. So the first, at the, this 71 month can be an MCQ. Apart from that, there are two MCQ in the last paragraph, which has been shown on your screen. Which in, uh, this you can get in from Shobha Tendon, as well as Damle, as well as in McDonald's, in the child, chapter of caries. These are the various definitions that has been explained by uh, of early child, uh, various different terms, tooth cleaning habit given by Moss. Horowitz has given as rampant infant and early childhood dental caries and Davies had given the term early childhood caries. The, big, uh, the chart for this has been taken from Shobha Tandon. Moving to the next MCQ, which of the following is a not a feature of a long standing mouth breathing habit? In the chapter related to habits, one need to understand all the various features of any of the habit, maybe it's thumb sucking, tongue thrusting or mouth breathing habit. Your the uh, answer to this question is a large nose. The various features of mouth breathing habit has been mentioned in this slide. The classification is given by Finn which includes anatomic, obstructive and habitual. The various features changes that can cause uh, dentofacial features that can uh, changes that can cause due to mouth breathing are it can cause a retrognathic maxilla and mandible it can cause an adenoid faces it can cause a it can cause uh, buccal segments and the uh, of the maxilla uh, become collapsed and can cause a V shape of the maxilla it can also cause retroclination of both maxilla and the mandible the external nase are atrophic and the nose 
is narrow it's not large so the answer to this question is a large nose they have asked not always remember don't get confused by not and a feature of it the labial gingivitis is the most first sign to understand the mouth breathing habit the various other clinical tests used for mouth breathing are mirror test butterfly test water holding test inductive plethysmography this is the test which is often asked uh, uh, in mcq and the other test is cephalometrics so remember this five names so that this can be an mcq the classification is also an mcq and the clinical features is also been given in this slide moving to the next slide the lactobacillus colony count test to assess caries activity was given by the various caries activity tests can be studied from shoba tendon there is a classification which is also been mentioned in the references which will have been given to you online or it will be reaching to you on post the uh, it has to be read from shoba tendon as well as soben peter the lactobacillus colony count test was first introduced by hadley in 1933 uh, since uh, it's a test which is used to see the lactobacilli in the inside the saliva moving to the next slide children often overprotective on over indulgent mother shows the answer to this question is demanding and aggressive behavior when the mother is overprotective or over indulgent the child becomes aggressive and demanding when the mother is overprotective and dominant the child is shy and if the uh, uh, mother is under affectionate the patients are normally well behaved but they unable to cooperate easily cooperate easily in an rejecting mother the child is also aggressive and disobedient in an authoritarian authoritarian mother the child is mostly evasive and dawdling so moving to the next mcq following the premature in the previous slide that we have shown this slide has this chart has table has been taken from shoba tendon and you have to remember this chart because it includes various mcqs following the premature loss of deciduous tooth the space loss occurs the various uh, options given are occurs predominantly from the anterior in the maxillary arch and posterior in mandibular arch this is wrong is more rapid in 6 months after the loss it occurs most rapid in for 6 months not after for 6 months the correct answer to this mcq is c which is occurs more rapidly in the maxillary arch than in mandibular arch it's uh, the fourth option is also wrong that it's inversely proportional it's directly proportional from to the time of the loss of the deciduous teeth in this slide you can see the space loss as given by breakspear in 1951 in which there is shown that total loss of d plus it's around 11.2 mm in maxilla in total 3 years and in mandible it is around 8 mm 8 mm moving to the next mcq the universally used method of behavior management in pediatric dentistry for both cooperative and uncooperative children all the techniques mentioned are used in behavior management of this techniques communication is the basic and the most important technique which is used for behavior management so it's a universally accepted method for behavior management this is a really easy mcq please don't mistake in such mcqs yeah so So moving to the next slide this is a slide which says when a dentist says i cannot fix your teeth if you do not open your mouth wide he is employing the various options given here are problem ownership voice control tolerance and flexibility the chart which is seen on your which is seen here is a uh, the answer to this question is problem ownership when it, in a child if you blame on the child the child is not going to cooperate we always start saying with the sentencing starting from i we cannot blame the child that you have done a mistake 
you ca- if you don't cooperate i won't do able be uh, i won't be able to do the treatment this is one of the techniques discussed by whiteman and sonnenberg so it is problem ownership the problem needs to be owned by the dentist if the child don't if we blame on the child again and again that you are not setting properly you are not your behavior is uncooperative that is not a proper behavior man- management technique we need to take the problem on ourselves like that we can say that if you don't if you don't sit properly i won't be able to s- clean your teeth so the answer to this question is problem ownership this has been taken from mcdonalds you can see the third chapter of non pharmacological management of behavior techniques somebody had posted a query regarding the problem uh, regarding why is the answer over indulgent why not over protective please see the question the question is child of an over protective over indulgent child, mother is demanding and aggressive it's not the vice versa so we have changed uh, so just please refer the question the your query would be answered problem ownership has been given by sonnenberg which has been already been shown on your slide and this tab- chart which has been taken it has been given it has been given by whiteman and sonnenberg this you can see this chart has been taken from mcdonalds you can view uh, refer the third chapter whiteman and sonnenberg moving to the next slide frankel's rating 3 indicate this is a very easy mcq the answer to this is positive i have previously already mentioned that it starts with negative and not positive it's definitely negative then negative positive and definitely positive these are simple mistakes which student make they consider that category 1 is definitely positive but category 1 is definitely negative so it's an easy mcq moving to the next slide is the manage following is not a communicative management technique according to american academy of pediatric dentistry standards the various MC, uh, options given here are voice control positive reinforcement physical restraints and distraction so uh, you can see the table on communication management the various techniques according to aapd guidelines are tell, tell show do voice control distraction positive reinforcement and non verbal communication so the answer to this is restraints physical restraint is not a communicative management technique you apply a restraint you don't communicate with the child so it's a physical restraint which is the answer to this mcq just read the answer, uh, mcq twice and you will get the answer it's an easy mcq moving to the 15th mcq when one primary canine is lost prematurely it is imperative to maintain the the answer to this mcq is midline whenever a primary canine is lost due to the shi- uh, there is a shifting of the uh, midline because the uh, primary molar shift towards the next uh, shift towards the other side uh, and the answer to this is midline and they uh, in order to correct the uh, uh, midline discrepancy we often extract the contralateral uh, canine in order to avoid the midline uh shift of the procedure we'll be taking a break of a minute please be online
Good morning, welcome back again. So moving further, we have already complete 15 MCQs. We move to the next MCQ. Uh, somebody had posted a query about how does contralateral tooth extraction help. Contralateral tooth extraction, see because when we extract one of the C, the lateral incisors of that side move on, if you have extracted 8, 3, the 3, 1 and 4, 1 or uh, would be shifted towards the right side and because of that, the left sided incisors would come on the uh, this side, uh, on the right side. So in order to prevent that, we extract both of the canines together. So in order to prevent the midline discrepancy. So this is the another MCQ which is often asked uh, uh, when primary canine are often extracted together in order to prevent midline discrepancy. So now we move towards the next slide. The procedure which slowly develops behavior by reinforcing successive approximations of desired behavior until the desired behavior comes to has been termed as the answer to is, is behavior shaping. There is you have to realize the three uh, definition of all these things behavior shaping behavior management and behavior modification. Always try to remember the key words for the various definition. Just as we mentioned that in Frankel's behavior rating, the definitely negative is refusal and def, uh, negative is reluctance. Similarly, in behavior shaping definition, you need to understand the keywords are reinforcing successive approximations. When you see reinforcing successive approximation, the answer is behavior shaping. It is also called a stimulus response theory. You can read this definition has been clear, given clearly in Shubha tendon. Uh, the second definition is behavior management, which is effectively and efficiently performs dental treatment and instills a positive dental attitude. This has been given by Wright in 1975. This is behavior management. The first one is behavior shaping, which is reinforcing successive approximation. And the third definition is behavior uh, modification, which is defined as the attempt to alter the human behavior and emotion in a beneficial way and in accordance to the laws of learning. Moving to the next slide. The fears that are produced by direct physical stimulation of sense organs are when the fears are produced by direct stimulation, its objective objective fears. So answer to this is objective. Subjective fears, uh, fears uh, can be uh, either be imaginative or can be told by someone when uh, uh, in subjective often the fears of a six year old child is subjective fears because they have been often been uh, told about uh, dental fear by their parents or, or other children. But when it's from direct physical stimulation of the sense organ it is objective fears. When it has been explained or it has been imagined or has been told by somebody else, it is subjective fear. So two types of fear, subjective and objective fear. A is not the answer. The answer is C. Somebody has posted A. The answer to this direct physical stimulation is objective. Moving to the next MCQ, during the fabrication of a band and loop space maintainer, where should we band biter be placed for final positioning of the band? This is a very confusing MCQ, just you have to remember the answer to this MCQ. The answer to this MCQ is the first one, it has been taken from pink hand. It is placed on either distolingual aspect in the maxillary teeth and distofacial aspect on the mandibular teeth. It is placed on this side for the proper seating of the band. The answer, all the other options are wrong. You will have to just mug up this MCQ. The answer is distolingual aspect and distofacial aspect. The other various MCQ which can be asked related to band and loop are what is the size of the wire used in the band with this 36 milli inch or 19 gauge wire. This has been given from Pinkham. The distance of the band from the gingiva should be 1 millimeter, which is another MCQ. 
and the distance between the buccal part and the lingual part of the loop is 8 mm. Why 8 mm? In order to facilitate the eruption of the premolar, the distance between the buccal and the lingual part of the band is 8 mm. So the answer to this is 8 mm. Is everybody getting the MCQs? Everybody able to see the video and the uh, hear the audio? Band biter is a instrument which is used to properly sit the band. Whenever you fabricate a band and loops space maintainer, we either use preformed band or made a custom bands. So when preformed bands are used, they are uh, in order to seat them properly so that they go uh, properly on the tooth, a band biter is used uh, and the patient is told to patient is told to bite on the band in order to uh, seat the uh, seat the band on the tooth. The answer to this MCQ is A that is distolingual aspect of maxillary teeth and distofacial aspect of mandibular teeth. Moving to the next MCQ, the pre-cooperation age is how many years? This is also a very easy answer. The answer is two years. It's a uh, pre-cooperation is two. The child of at the age of two does not understand, so we can't term them uncooperative, and they are considered uh, two. Uh, they are considered as pre-cooperative stage, and they are also often being termed as terrible twos or pre-cooperative stage. It is very difficult to make them cooperative because they, their mental development is not enough to understand what we would explain them. So answer is 2. Moving to the next is cat in pediatric dentistry refers to. Please don't confuse between caries activity test. Okay, caries activity test is not the answer. The answer to this question is caries risk assessment tool. Okay, CAT is caries risk assessment tool. You should not make mistake as caries activity test has been. They purposely put A as the option as caries activity test, and commonly student make mistakes while putting the answer uh, putting the answer as A, and it is uh, not the answer. The answer is caries risk assessment tool, which is given by AAPD, and it helps to assess the level of the risk in development uh, risk of caries in infants, children, and adolescents. And it has, uh, they can be classified according to, accordingly, various characteristics are used like family history, presence of lark, fluoride exposure, uh, concept of dental home has been used or no, sugar consumption, and accordingly, child is uh, classified as low, moderate, and high. This is caries risk assessment tool, uh, which is abbreviated as CAT. Moving to the next MCQ is a crying two-year-old child brought to your dental clinic would be classified under rights classification of child behavior as the various options are potentially cooperative, uncooperative, child lacking cooperative ability and timid child. The answer to this is child lacking cooperative ability. Pre-cooperative age, somebody had asked, is been previous uh, is also been known as terrible twos. Terrible twos has been term given in McDonald's, and the, this MCQ, cry, uh, crying two-year-old child brought to your dental clinic has been classified as child lacking cooperative ability. This is same as two uh, similar previous MCQ in which we were uh, talking about terrible twos, and here the answer is child lacking cooperative ability. We have been already previously shown the classification of the rights. Rights classification about cooperation, which includes cooperative, lacking cooperative ability, and potentially cooperative. So these two you have to mug up Frankel's and rights. Here you have cooperative, lacking cooperative, and potentially cooperative. And the various uncooperative behavior as given by Wright in 1975 are uncontrolled hysterical, 
डिफाइंट टेंस कॉपरेटिव टिमिड विनिंग टाइप स्टॉइक एंड कॉपरेटिव एंड एक्सेप्ट प्रोसीजर द लास्ट बिहेवियर स्टॉइक बिहेवियर इज एन अनदर एमसीक्यू विच हेज बीन टेकन फ्रॉम राइट क्लासिफिकेशन दे नॉर्मली आस्क वॉट टाइप ऑफ बिहेवियर बिहेवियर इज सीन इन फिजिकली अब्यूज चिल्ड्रेन the answer to this is a stoic behavior so please remember this is also one of the mcq which is taken from rights classification so remember there are two to three mcqs in the cooperative part stoic behavior includes another mcq also remember about the two year old terrible twos and uh, pre cooperative age moving to the next mcq the first book on child dentistry you have to remember this as joseph herlock the answer to this is joseph herlock g w right have given the class uh, g w right has given the right triangle there are mcqs related to right triangle also in which includes the that where is the child located the child is located always at the apex and the arrows mcqs related to arrows uh, arrows uh, on of the right triangle you also need to remember about those right triangle which was given in 1975 by g w right Joseph Herlock gave the first uh, book on child dentistry. Garaldi had given various theories on tooth eruption and exfoliation. Remember that it's not a very important thing, but if ever asked, Garaldi had given theories of tooth eruption and exfoliation. Tooth eruption and exfoliation. moving to the next mcq the art of reinforcing good behavior displayed by child with verbal praise applies to reinforcing good behavior displayed by child with verbal praise this is a type of a positive reinforcement technique and positive reinforcement technique is been taken from operant conditioning theory of child psychology which has been given by skinners this table that you see over here it's reinforcement technique first see this positive uh, first the upper uh, upper first line is positive and negative this is the type of behavior and when you see on the left side the uh, rows include the reinforcement which includes the increases the frequency or decreases the frequency if you type on internet you can get this chart easily or you can also see uh, profit orthodontia book they have also given this chart uh, when you praise the child and uh, in, uh, they it increases the frequency of desired behavior this is called as positive re reinforcement and when you remove a stimulus which is negative it also increases the frequency of the behavior this is also reinforcement but that is negative reinforcement so remember the positive reinforcement this is taken from operant conditioning that is given by skinner so these three mcqs one need to understand classical conditioning psychoanalytic tingle and so, uh, social learning theory uh, theories please read all those theories and their classification accordingly moving to the next mcq a frightened child is exposed to a dental clinic setting which is pleasant colorful and different from a previous clinic where a painful experience occur the child is happy and the treatment is completed the psychological conditioning principle used here is this is a difficult mcq just sit, read the key lines the child has been taken to the next clinic it's they have mentioned he has been taken to the different clinic and because he had a previous clinic a uh, painful experience at a previous clinic he goes to the other clinic and here his response is uh, here he is pleasant color uh, and his cooperative So the psychological conditioning principle used here is discrimination. So I'll explain you this. There are four things which needs to be understood over here: It is acquisition, generalization, extinction, and discrimination. Acquisition is learning a new response, while generalization is a test stimulus similar to training stimulus. The uh, the response get generalized over. continuous enforcement and third thing here is extinction occurs if association between the condition and unconditioned response is not reinforced so 
what exactly this extinction means. Extinction means in when we take this MCQ, if they had mentioned that it had been in the same clinic and in the second setting the child starts cooperative and his fears are gone, then it had been extinction. But here the clinic has changed, the dental setting has changed. See the definition over here of discrimination. It is opposite to generalization and if a child is exposed to a clinic setting which is different from the associated with the painful experiences which he had learned earlier in previous clinic. So when the responses are different uh, in a different clinical setting, it is discrimination and, and, and when in the same clinic, if all the uncooperative nature is extinguished, then it is extinction. So please see the difference between discrimination and extinction. This has been taken from Shobha Tandon. Please read it. The next MCQ is the groove separating the thumb pad from the palate is called as. The answer to this is gingival groove. The various grooves in the primary, uh, in the gum pad of an infant are, there are transverse groove which divides the gum pad into 10 segments for the 10 teeth of each arches. The lateral sulcus which is present between C and D, it is present between the primary canine and the first primary molar. The gingival groove separates the gum pad from the palate or the lingual extent of the gum pad. And the dental groove originates in the incisive papilla region, extend backward to touch the gingival groove and the canine region and then laterally to the end in the molar region. Here MCQs include the lateral sulcus and the gingival groove. Gingival groove differentiate between the gingiva and the uh, uh, gingiva from the gum pad and the dental groove is originates from the incisive papilla and goes behind till the gingival groove in the canine region and, and ends in the molar region. Transverse groove divides into ten, 10 segments. This has been given in Balaji of Orthodontia as well as it has been given in Shubha tendon. A parent asks the dentist, is the treatment necessary? After initial examination and explanation about treatment required, the behavior of the parent is termed as is neglectful, manipulative, hostile or overprotective. The answer to this question is C. Hostile. Okay, whenever parents are, uh, the question itself explains the hostile nature of the parent. So it's the clear answer that the answer is hostile. Moving to the next MCQ, the first macroscopic development occurs at approximately, this also you will have to remember, it occurs at 11 weeks in utero. The first macroscopic development occurs at 11 weeks in utero. You will have to remember there are no, uh, you, you can't forget these questions. Moving to the next MCQ. The window of infectivity during which most children acquire karyogenic organism. The window of infectivity during which more most children acquire the karyogenic organism. Organism, the answer to this is easy, it's 19 months uh, to 33, 19 to 33 months. It is given me by Caulfield in 1993. These, uh, this is the another MCQ which is now commonly asked. 19 to 33 months. It's not 19 to 33 weeks. And the second window of infectivity is from 6 to 12 years. It has been given by Clock and Cross in 1977. So remember window of infectivity, 19 to 33 months. Clock and Cross for second window of infectivity for 6 to 12 years of age. Caulfield, Clock and Cross. These are the name of the scientists you need to remember over here. Moving to the next MCQ. Joseph will develop the following behavior management technique. The this is a very easy, it's given by, uh, it has given uh, desensitization. This slide also names the various scientists who have given the various behavior management technique like modeling is given by Bandura, Telshodu has been given by Adelston, desensitization has been given by Joseph Wolf, HOM is given by Evangeline Jordan, then signal system which is used in, uh, in behavior shaping and behavior modification uh, management is given by Musilman. Contingency management we have already discussed previously. 
operant conditioning contingency management is positive and negative reinforcement and all those things we have already previous discussed it previously which has been given by skinner so remember the name of all these scientists any of them can be an mcq moving to the next slide the guidance to eruption is another term you for it's very easy it's serial extraction it's a direct answer various other mcqs related to this question are 1929 jelgen used the term serial extraction nans gave it the term as planned and progressive extraction nans is also called as the father of serial extraction in united states this is another mcq who is the father of serial extraction it's nans he is also termed it as planned and progressive extraction in hobbs in switzerland has called his active guidance of eruption so your guidance of eruption is serial extraction moving to the next mcq the tendency for drifting of the posterior teeth into the extraction space is more in this is also a clear cut mcq we already discussed previously the amount of space loss is more in maxilla so the answer to this question is maxilla okay when the protraction headgear is used most of the orthopedic changes are observed during first the answer to this question is 8 to 10 months you'll have to remember this this has been taken from shubha tandon and you have to remember these things it has to be the protraction headgear is used for 4 to 9 months on a full time basis and the after using it for 4 to during the use of four to, uh, in 4 to 10 9 months the changes start appearing in another 8 to 10 months and after the changes have been done the protraction headgear has to be still used for another 6 to 12 months in order to for retention so uh, 8 to 10 months the changes occur it has to wear actively for 4 uh, to 9 months and for retention it has to be worn for another 6 to 12 months moving to the next mcq who proposed the nasal septum theory of craniofacial growth this has been taken from mcdonalds uh, the answer to this is latham who also called it call it as a septo maxillary theory the answer to this is latham please note it down the various other theories which are uh, functional matrix theory which is given by melvin moss the first option sicher has given the sutural theory van lumberg has given the multifactorial theory cartilaginous theory is given by scott and septo maxillary or pre, septo pre maxillary theory is given by latham which is also called as nasal septum theory of craniofacial growth so please remember the name of this scientist are everybody able to see the video of the slides seen on your chart uh, on your computer please reply are you able to see the slide or only the video is gone okay so everybody can see it we'll move previous uh, ahead toddlers are toddlers are from the various option is 0 to 1 year 3 to 6 year 1 to 2 year or 6 to 8 year the answer to this is 1 to 3 years so you can write 1 to 2 years over here as an answer which is c the various uh, option uh, the classification of uh, ages is given as 0 to 1 year is infant 1 to 3 years is toddler 3 to 6 years are preschoolers 6 to 12 years are school age children and 12 to 19 years is adolescent moving to the next slide is the global monitoring age is 
फोर इयर्स टू इयर्स सिक्स इयर्स और ट्वेल्व इयर्स The answer to this question is twelve years. This is the age which is a very important because the child leaves a primary school, and it's the last age that can be obtained from the school record. And most of the children do attend the primary school, so it is a very important age to see the amount of carries. Hence, it has been written as a global monitoring age. so the global monitoring age you have to remember it 12 years at this age all the permanent teeth of the children are erupted so it is easy uh, it is very easy to see the amount of caries and it serves as a base in order to monitor caries moving to the next slide is young's formula for calculating pediatric dose of a drug this you have to remember the three formulas given over here the first option age upon age plus 12 into the adult dose is the young's formula age upon 20 into adult dose is the dilling's rule okay 12 is young 20 is dilling and weight in pounds upon 150 into adult dose is clark's rule remember all these three you any of them can be an mcq So Young's formula, Dilling's rule, and Clark rule for pediatric dosage of a drug. Please note it down. Moving to the next slide. During what stage of development is peer group identified strongest? So when is the peer influence highest? It is very easy. It's in the teenage stage. So the answer is teenager. We won't be spending much time. We'll be going to the next peer uh, next slide. Hand over mouth technique was first described by. The answer to this is Evangeline Evangeline Jordan. We have already discussed previously. G. V. Black has given the classification for uh, caries. Adelson has given the tell show do. So we move to the next slide. The term rampant caries applies to. You all want to see the previous slide? Just which slide? Young's formula, Dilling's rule, and Clark rule. please note this down young's formula dilling's rule the clark rule age upon age plus 12 age upon age age upon 20 it's uh, and weight upon weight in pounds upon 150 into the adult dose this is the clark rule so we move ahead to the next mcq the rampant caries applies to the mouth having either five or more lesions per year two or more lesions 12 or more lesions or 10 or more lesions the answer to this is b that is 10 or more lesions per year please also remember the class uh, definition of rampant caries as given by masler which is a suddenly appearing widespread and rapidly burrowing type of caries this can also be asked as an mcq they can just give the definition and ask you what is it early childhood caries severe early childhood caries rampant caries so the answer to that would be rampant caries which has be which is more than 10 or more than 10 lesions per year moving to the next mcq chronic palpal involvement in deciduous molar is first manifested as this is also very commonly asked mcq that in primary to first seen changes in the iopa 
is the fuzziness in the furkish 